first phone call you got this morning? Uh, the first phone call I didn't hear. Um, my wife is uh, eight and a half months okay. pregnant or so. We're expecting our first child. And so we were sleeping in the living room because that's where she's most comfortable. And um, we heard uh, banging on the door and doorbells ringing. And so at 3.30 in the morning, you don't expect visitors. So we both walked to the back of the house and called 911. And uh, this is the humor in all this. And I said, somebody's trying to get in my house and I'm a little worried before I answer the door. And the dispatcher said, it's us. The church is on fire. And I, I walked outside, I, I live just up the road, I walked outside and I could see uh, the church in Colton. You know, I wondered if I was still asleep, hoping that I was still asleep. I think that this is, uh, you know, every pastor's nightmare is that, you know, even though this building is not our church, uh, while the building may be destroyed, the church remains strong. But yet, we know that there are a lot of memories here. There are a lot of people that uh, met in this building. There are a lot of people that were baptized here married here, children dedicated here. So so that's what I follow. That's a really good point. I didn't even think about that part. Um, talk about how old the church is and kind of how the building was set up. Okay. Um, the church, is, the building itself, the sanctuary uh, is 50, uh, well, no, it was, it was built around 1950. Um, the church is over 100 years old. It was founded in 1903. Uh, the building to the back over here, uh, which some call the parsonage, is the oldest part. Um, and it was the third building. And then the sanctuary was built in about 1950. And then the part over the education facility was built somewhere in the 60s or after the sanctuary. But to me, when I got here, I didn't realize that it was three buildings. And the three buildings just fit together so seamlessly. You know, it's just a beautiful picture of what the church is. So what did the fire department tell you as far as where they believe it started? The first flames were spotted in the uh, front portion of the building, in the top. Uh, and so that's where our sound room was located. So that's what we're assuming it was somewhere in that vicinity. And there were no fireplaces in the church? No, no fireplaces. We, no we space had a, heaters going? No space heaters. No, uh, We had a floor heater that I unplugged before I left. Uh, last night after choir rehearsal, so you know nothing was. Uh, so you think it's electrical? We think it's electrical. Yeah. Um, how many square feet is the church? Oh goodness, I wouldn't have any. No idea. How many yeah. people attended the church? Uh, on Sundays, uh, somewhere around a hundred, a little bit more, uh, depending. So uh, a lot of our folks have moved off into the Tri City. As your phone rings, no doubt you've been getting calls from people and support. Is pouring in. Uh, uh, support began pouring in almost immediately. Um, we, we just had we've had small uh, miracles all through the way. I, I could just feel feel you. But uh, you no, know, it was amazing how this community. I'm originally from Texas, and that's the first thing I've said about Buchanan County. It's the people are generous, and from the first break of daylight. People were coming up to me saying, you're not alone, we're going to help you. Any idea um, where um, you might hold Sunday service now? Uh, this Sunday we're going to be at our neighbor facility in the Booth Center, which is co-owned by uh, Southwest Virginia Community College and the Appalachian School of Law. They're good neighbors to us and have agreed to allow us to have services there so we can have some continuity and, you know, People can park in the very same places that they normally park at, and uh, on Sundays we we normally have a, a breakfast. Uh, some people call it the best free breakfast you can get on Sunday, <laughs> and so we're going to have breakfast on Sunday. And uh, business as usual. Business as usual. Worship as usual. We're going to finish the service by um, we we've adopted one of our local schools, and so we're going to be putting together presents for the children of that school as we finish our worship service this Sunday. So even though you guys just lost everything, you're going to continue to give? Oh, without a doubt.
Talk about what a loss this is, especially this close to Christmas. It's difficult. Uh, it, it points us back that even though you can lose the facility where you worship the Christ of Christmas, really what we've lost are chairs, carpet, pews, and so it's just, it's knocked us down, but we're not knocked out. Uh, as I told the people Sunday, and I had one of my church members reminded me this morning, it's time to look up and uh, take our eyes off of ourselves and, and put them on Jesus who was given to us on that Christmas day. Anything else? No, I, I think we've covered it. Okay. You know, um, Thank um, you. I, we have to ask you this. Did you have insurance on the bill? We did have insurance. Right, good, yeah, good. we did have insurance. That's good to hear. Um, um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I can't think oh, if you've got an address or anything you want to give uh, the people uh, that they give to, they want to do a donation. Uh, it's P.O. Box 675, Grundy, Virginia, 24614. Okay.